got this courtesy of resident advisor it looks like joy orbison is launching his own club night in london called just for you courtesy of resident advisor this news and i mentioned previously it looks like um clubs are deciding to take a different approach when it comes to programming their nights um, they are deciding to book a lot of home-based djs and acts because obviously they've been backed into a corner because of the pandemic they can't fly over people and of course brexit too is also limiting the ability to kind of bring people over big ticket artists and there's obviously been a little bit more of a push to reintroduce the whole resident dj um approach to clubs where essentially you have a whole bevy or roster of djs that play at your club week in week out and then you sprinkle in some um some big names and again you know you think of places like Berghain, they have a really long list of residents who they play with, who play with it all the time and then they include the the old guest here and there in the line to kind of mix up and keep it fresh but the core of their club is basically um the core of the foundation or yeah of their roster is mostly residents who play most days in the week whenever they're open and it kind of allows the customers to get you know used to what sounds are expected in a club it allows the dj and artist to grow and kind of gain an, uh, an understanding how to play to a crowd um it cultivates a scene it inspires maybe people that are coming in who might want to dj themselves to so maybe do it like it's a really good thing but for the most part i don't know why in the uk it's a thing that never really took off too tough people kind of just focused on i know why because you know licensing laws are crazy rents are high people need to make their money back on their spaces or nights they put on so they can't afford to just book a no-name person like me they should they'd rather go and book like a flipping big person like a marco carola a richie or in back in the day right all these people but ricardo villa lobos because they know they're going to put bums in seats quote unquote like yeah um whatever maybe but now of course things have changed and they're trying to change it the other way and also it looks like DJs who maybe previously had no interest in doing such stuff like club nights because they were getting booked all over the world because they're at home now and they've got nothing to do and maybe money's drying up and rent's still there and mortgage is still there. They're having to flip and refigure how they're going to do things. And Joe Oberson, I don't know whether or not he's off well off or not. Don't really, you know what I mean? Not pocket watching the guy, but it's interesting the timing of him deciding to do a club night in London, um, which of course is going to be you know it's obviously a test run it's not going to be something he's going to stick with for a while but still it's interesting to see a dj or an artist of his caliber deciding to kind of knuckle down and maybe do something here on a weekly basis build it up and then hope that that could be enough to sustain it because I've, I've always been under that guys anyway i never understood people who were like desperate to have like 700 flipping gigs in a year and shit i would much rather have the ability again for me my dream would be to be able to play in places like robert johnson blitz in munich uh, obviously Berghain, obviously maybe Roses, um, weird maybe sets in like, you know, eight millimeter bar, it obviously in Berlin too, that I really like, um, Fold obviously here in London, maybe Fabric places and Corsica too, like a few of the established places, right? But just have maybe, let's say, well, let's say how many gigs in a year, let's say maybe like 10 gigs in a year, 10 gigs per month, right? just something cash something cash so you go to these places you maybe have a couple of residencies a couple of guest spots but that's it um it keeps you fresh it doesn't burn you out you can start digging for music because you don't taking flights every single single day and connecting flights here and there it, it allows you to obviously build a repertoire of tunes that you can play in different places that go down differently because i think of it like um what's his face i've got his name who passed away I think he had a similar approach where he basically had a way of playing in certain places that booked him often that he kind of he kind of tailor his sets based on where he was playing and I think that's really a lot to be said for that because you know I think the industry for, for as much as these DJs can be blamed for you know being a little bit uninspired and phoning it in you also have to blame the industry that kind of pushes them to play these crazy gigs all around the world back to back to back to back with no break in between you know crazy hedonistic lifestyle and then you're complaining that their you know creative output isn't as great yeah of course it's not because they're not being creative they're just being machines and being paid to queue and pull queue and play queue and play but anyway joe Epson launches his own club night just for you debut edition kicks off on next week on journey 20th i'm gonna be there it says um just for you will happen monthly at the below stone nest a bar that's part of west end performing art space stone nest which i've never heard to be honest before um the first event is set for thursday interesting day so he's clearly going for the because i remember back in the day especially where when plastic people used to be uh, alive right the, there's a great 
bar in um, a bit great club on Curtain Road in Shoreditch, right? One of the best ones. Like such a shame it's disappeared, but or such a shame it closed. I think it actually is on the site where Goodhood is now. Really great club. And back in that, back in those days, even back in old school Soho days, there was a thing about midweek raving, sometimes even Sunday raving. And some people would say, actually, the time the pros and the time the OGs, the ones that actually knew what well won, they would actually rave on the Thursday instead of the Friday, Saturday. That's when all the bait heads and then all the normies came out. So it's nice to see him kind of tipping his hat to that old school thing. Entry is free, a musical run between 9 p.m. and 1 p.m. Again, that reminds you of the old school Dawson times too. Those those like perfect times to go and place. And lineups won't be revealed ahead of time, meaning attendees will only discover who's playing once they enter the venue. Joberson explained this in an Instagram post. So his Instagram post as follows. I like the little beer coaster thing. Is that a beer coaster? I'm assuming, right? I'm definitely going to nick one. Um, it says the following, just for you at Below Stone Nest. I wanted to have my own party in London for years now. When I was growing up, club felt like more like a supportive of new music and producers. So now it seems like an important time for more spaces like that to exist. Just for you will be a monthly club night downstairs in a beautiful building called Stone Nest London on Shaftesbury Avenue. With the emphasis being on forward thinking music with a mixture of new established names, the lamps will stay secret until you get down the venue. Then once inside, there'll be a unique artwork designed by Emma Toma with all the info. Wow, I love that. We will begin next Thursday from 9 p.m. to 1. Entry is free. Hope you see you there. Yeah, definitely I'm there. Definitely I'm there. It's like every week. I said, hold on, what is it every week? Not there, just for you. Shaftesbury Avenue. I think it's, is it every week or just once? Is it a monthly? I think it might be monthly, right? My own party years now. Yeah. Putting on your own rave, man. I'm, I'm glad I'm out of the promotion circuit. To be honest, it's actually harder to be a... Hmm. Should I say that out loud? Yeah, it's, I think it's harder to be a DJ than it is to be a promoter. Obviously, with a promoter, obviously, most of it has to do with your lineup, especially in London. If you've got a sick lineup, people are going to come. But sometimes it's no guarantee either because I've put on raves before where, you know, five of my friends showed up only and that was it. Like, And it's brutal and the ego because you still have to pay the DJs that come. So the DJs don't want to play and they just want to give you the money and leave. So you you got that thing and you're just thinking in your head, oh my God, I fucked up. Fucked up. But trying to make as a DJ on your own, especially if you don't produce, it's a brutal. It's brutal. Especially if you have no contacts, it's brutal on my end. Um, so you're just kind of there in the lurch. But the promoting thing is, I don't know, I think in terms of a blow to your ego, when people don't come to a party you're put on, it's one thing sending out mixes and trying to get venues to book you and then getting completely ghosted or being left on scene. That's brutal to the ego. That's going to hurt. But... <laughs> putting an event on especially in this sometimes putting an event on in a space that's usually busy and your night isn't busy so it's clearly people saying we don't want to come to your party because we don't know who you are or it looks shit or whatever it may be that's brutal that's something that kind of stays with you for a long time i'm gonna be honest that stays with you for a long time and i think that's maybe why i didn't let i didn't kind of dip my foot back into the promotion circuit again after i had i had that stint in dawson where i was kind of running around and doing parties around there i kind of from then i just kind of backed away and said i'm a dj i'm a dj i'm a dj jeremy i think because of the, how brutal it was and how hard it was and the drama and you know i even fell out with a friend off the back of it it's just it's just not it's not worth it it really isn't you know what i mean it really isn't um especially if you especially if you're not really about this life because the people that are still promoting now that were doing it back then because if i remember correctly i might have started promoting again yeah, this is weird to say i might start putting on my parties at the same time that secret sunday started around the same time and secret sundays now is like a label it's a whole thing right it's a business right um and i started then at the same time i think around the same time if i'm not mistaken because i'm pretty sure i remember seeing those two guys from secret sundays around places the guy with the flipping um what's it from the guy that wears the fucking beret i remember seeing him like we used to bump i don't i don't know their names but i remember seeing those guys around often and they're, the, they're still around now. But again, they've got a legit business. And we were just, you know, putting on raves with people that we liked. We saw on SoundCloud and making flyers on Photoshop. Same thing that they're doing, but it's just a brutal thing. You have to be really about this life. And again, I think even, what's their, what's their face? What their, what's their name's called? Um, Body, not Body Hammer. What's their face called? Um, Horsebeak Disco also, I think, might have started around the same time that we started to. And, you know, here I am talking to you for a webcam and Horsebeak Disco are living their best life somewhere. Do you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, the, this tea cards, I think, looks good. The piece of artwork as well. Matt, oh, the, some of the names are on there in terms of who might be playing. I think if you are uh, eagle-eyed, you probably know who it is. I can't bother to decipher it. Um, 
this place though, I've never heard of it, this new club. It looks great, innit? It's like a nice rustic looking basement bar. The sound's gonna be fucking awesome. I've never really heard of this place, man. It looks great, innit? Lossy bitch. Let me see if I can get this up without breaking my computer. Um actually, what's actually the actual place is called Below Stone Nest, right? Um, let's get it up on there on, on, on RA and let's get it up on Instagram and see what it looks like because I'm really curious to see what this venue thing looks like because we need we need more of these kind of basement e vibe places, you know what I mean, in London where you can go and just you can go and just it's sort of like similar to like what's that place called I haven't been to again, the one I want to go to um that cancelled the party that I went to go to. The glove that fits, right? That's another venue too that it's just decent it's got a decent sound system the lineup's pretty sick from what i've seen no the sound system i've heard is quite sick because i haven't been there but the lineup is always decent and you can just trust it to go there on the weekend and it's going to be a vibe and we need more of these kind of places in london because at the moment even as great as fold and all these places are there they are mostly ticketed events is where you have to kind of book a ticket ahead of time you have to do a lot you don't have to do a lot but you kind of have to make sure you plan your night out like you do you want to go there do you want to go to corsica do you want to go to um What's the place called an angel? No, an angel. What's the place called in Bethnal Green? Whatever you, you know, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Pickle Factory, all these kind of places. So you have to kind of really decide if you want to go to these places. Whereas these kind of just pop in zones are usually quite good too. Oh, look how good this looks. Oh my God, this looks amazing. A bar in, look at this. Below Stone Nest, a bar in Soho, 136 Shaftesbury Avenue, opened from Wednesday to Saturday only. Walk in. Oh my God, this looks so cool. Yeah, I want to go. I want to go, man. That looks... Am it's already been open for a while. Okay, since November. I guess soft open. And now they're going to really boom it. Or they're really going to push things out. Oh, is that that R&B guy? That is, right? That's performing there. I forgot his name. Let me just check that quickly in a moment. Let me just see here. This looks really... Oh, this looks amazing. I love this. That is that R&B guy, right? Let me see if I can say that. I'm pretty sure that's that singer. I think he does r and B. I'm not mis I'm not mistaken. That's it, yeah. Must yeah, Mustafa the poet. I'm sure that is right. He doesn't bro. That's amazing. Oh my god, how cool is that? Look at this place. Any place that you go to, you know, I'm a sucker for flipping exposed walls and a board with some chalk or some markers on it. Honestly, like you got me. I mean, I'm one of those guys. I'm one of those flipping guys. Like you, you, you have some exposed brickwork and speakers hanging from the flipping ceilings by chains right and guys around with you know bar backs holding buckets of like bottles and stuff and moving around and really cool looking bartenders with like, tattoos and shit and cute girls wearing tight jeans you got me you got me you know what i mean you got me i'm tipping big i'm tipping big yo <laughs> oh my god this looks so cool um yeah this looks really really cool i'm not going to lie this looks so 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 cool i'm ready i'm really ready um have they got any other events on here was it let me see stone london was it is it stone this is or stone london east what they say new club what they say here they said stone london east they said below stone nest so that's the place right below stone nest beautiful building called stone nest london what is stone nest london is that like a building where it's hosted and i'm assuming right and then let's see what ra is saying for the rest of the lineups and listings on the actual place but yeah this looks really cool um, again, forgive me for wanking over such a minor thing, but honestly, we're so bereft of these kind of cool little places that you can go and hang out in London that when you do find one, you kind of have to hold it with both of your hands. Do you know what I mean? You can't let that crap go, man. You can't let it go. Okay, let's see if we can get this event listing up on here. I want to check out if they've got other things happening in that same space. See if it makes any sense to go to another event there, but yeah. Okay, um, Stone Nest London is an art organisation and performance space in a running, sorry, in a stunning former Welsh capital, Welsh chapel on Shaftesbury Avenue in the heart of London. Okay, cool, they're going to have different type of events on there, it looks like. And then I guess downstairs will be the club bar place that they're going to do things in. So there's going to be some big things on the horizon for this placement. I think if, they're able, if we're able to stay open as a country, they could possibly put on some interesting things on there. Uh, but yeah, I'm a I'm a fan of the approach. I like the approach. I'm not going to lie. Not announcing a lineup, um, having people just have to go there to kind of experience it. Um, I like that whole thing. I like the you know the random pieces of artwork that you get when you're there. 
I'm for it. I'm not going to lie. I'm for it. So yeah, if you're for it, check it out. Thursday, 20th of Jan, 2022, Shaftesbury Avenue. It's going to be a vibe. It might be a vibe. Um, will be good to see some people down there if you do end up going there. 